personal opinion. But anyway, so on that note, let's talk about music, 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 cool. music, because we are literally an hour and 15 minutes into this episode, and we All still right. haven't talked about Benefer, the Met Gala, and uh, <laughs> the Emmy predictions. So let's talk about music, and then we'll talk about uh, sort of the n- new movies, and we'll just do a rapid fire of what movies you're excited for, okay? Cool. Um, so music, I would say that, you know, this summer there's been a lot of really great stuff. I'd say the stuff that really stuck out to me was Olivia Rodrigo's entire album, Sour. I think if she really pushes herself, she could be bigger, like as big as like Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera or like that kind of genre. I guess Ariana Grande is more of a closer possible, but she's better than Ariana and she writes better music than Ariana. I think that the album overall is brilliant. It's, I, I'm like, fuck, if this album was out when I was in fucking high school, I would have been fucking losing my mind over how good it was. Cause it's very much in that, like, it, it's like a breakup-y album, but it's more like in the vein of like Paramore breakup the album. So it's a little more like, not like, oh, I miss you like Adele does and Taylor Swift does. It's more like, fuck you, I'm gonna key your car which I love. <laughs> like Carrie Underwood does. A little bit Carrie Underwood. Um, it's a great, it's a really great album. And I was shocked at how much I actually enjoyed it. She's also one of the main characters in High School Musical, the musical, the series, and has been doing some writing for that show. The music, not the, not the, she, I can only give her the music, the original songs. I can't give her the actual scripting because it's not great. <laughs> the script. <laughs> I, I want to talk about music because I, I want to talk about one topic that you just brought up and I want to get your opinion on it before we do change subjects. Um, free Britney. Uh, the Free Britney movement has been huge over the summer. Uh, oh, and, and for those who are not listening, for not watching this right now, Michael just made a massive gesture of how did I forget talking about that? How did so, I forget about my girl? Oh, let's be honest. I'm completely up creek without a paddle when it comes to Britney Spears. And I really could care two shits either way, to be honest, because I have things in my life I have to worry about. (laughs) Um, So free Britney, for those who don't know, she has been under a conservatorship over the last probably about 10 years, 15 years, since that faithful shaving of her head a few years ago after her marriage with K-Fed got divorced. Uh, she was under conservatorship, which her father was one of the people who was her conservator. Uh, over the last probably four or five years, the f- free Britney from the conservatorship was picking up steam. And then uh, after the New York Times released a movie, I think earlier this year, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the free Britney movie of the misunderstood side of Britney Spears, people really started to pick up. And then earlier this summer, Uh, She went to court where she got a lawyer appointed, a lawyer that she wanted appointed as uh, the other half of the conservatorship. And then earlier this summer also, her father said, oh, well, I'm going to step down now because I, there's a lawyer and all this stuff. I don't know the exact wording that he used, but he's stepping down from that role because he sees the backlash that is anti her father. What is your opinion on everything that's been going on with Britney Spears? So the big thing, he is allegedly stepping, the way he framed it, he's not currently stepping down. So it's very like, in theory, I'm stepping down, but like, I might not. It's like very much like, are you or aren't you? Like, do it, like step down. I think at the time when she was given the conservatorship, and this might be a little controversial, I because we don't necessarily know all of what, was going on behind the scenes. We only are getting what we saw face value and what was presented to us by her father, by her agent, by by all these people. I think at the time in 2007, a conservatorship wasn't the worst idea. However, she's clearly able to verbalize things herself. She's clearly able to dictate things that were causing her to kind of lose control of her life. I mean, she was being fed all of this medication and she was being fed this schedule by her team. I mean, I think that would lead anybody to kind of losing it for a bit. I don't know. I think now, especially in like hearing her in court, I would say remove the conservatorship. She's able to articulate her thoughts. She's able to articulate um, her feelings, her beliefs. She's able to self-regulate. She's able to take care of herself. I mean, I think at this point it is just a people cash grabbing for her money. And I think it should never have been her father. I think 
when you, I think overall it should always have been um, two lawyers, an outsi- who are- a two law- an outside influence kind of taking control of it. And then I think the biggest thing that we're learning now is the Jamie Lynn Spears like crocodile tears that have been going on with regards to this. Like Jamie Lynn Spears was involved, and for a while we were all kind of uncertain if she was involved or not with making this move forward or not. And Brittany's kind of confirmed that. So I think overall her family has just manipulated her her entire life in it for money because she's worth, she was more worth, I think she was the highest grossing female artist of all time or something insane like that. Do you remember her last album? When was their last album? Like 2000, like 2000. 11 or 10 she did that till the world ends and she had a song with Nicki minaj and is that the see you next tuesday or no that was 2007 circus britney okay i mean i don't know i've been one of those <laughs> albums from one of those then. things yeah totally <laughs> um, um, I, I, just... I think she's she's great i think it's a, it's a i think it's time and i i think she wants to, I mean, she's, she should have, um, the, she's clearly able to self-regulate herself. And I think that's when we need a system in this country, especially specifically in the U S to take people off of conservatorship. Cause, and that's the thing. She may not have ever even needed the conservatorship. But she got one. And now, so I am assuming yeah. from what you've just said, you are in the free Britney camp. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's time. I think it's really time. And even if it's one of those, like, we'll do it temporary and see if you really can. And I just give her the chance to be on her own. She's been so controlled her whole life. It's time to let her be with her boyfriend. It's time to, I mean, because with conservatorships, they will implant or imp, yeah, implant uh, birth control into you. So you are for, like, she wants to have a kid with her boyfriend that she's been dating for years. Like, it's kind of fucked up what the conservatorship's doing to her right now. And I don't think she honestly needs it at this point. That's the way the world works. God sure is. Bless it. Um, uh, for those uh, who, are, who are tuning in and who are with us right now, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for listening. Uh, we still have a few last topics that we want to talk about because this is the big show. This is the first episode back from the summer. So we had a lot of things that we wanted to cover. Yes. So thank you for tuning in and keeping with us and enjoying this. And hopefully this does get the traction like the last few episodes have done. Uh, I want to talk about what's coming up what's coming up uh let's talk about september and then october a little bit because we'll talk about october later on in in september but what are the movies you're looking forward to in september and uh october rapid fire just name a few so i did not pull any october movies y'all are gonna have to wait till the next show to get my list but for my upcoming movies um for september shang chi and the legend of the ten rings uh on september 3rd um Amazon is streaming Cinderella, the new Cinderella they're doing on September 3rd with Billy Porter, Camila Cabello, um, James Corden's in it. Can we get a movie musical without James Corden, please? Um, And then Malignant is September 10th. That is a horror movie that a friend actually showed me the trailer for that looks so good and so spooky. So I'm very excited for that. You're making a face. I'm making a face because I thought you were going to say one, which you haven't said yet. Which one? Everyone's talking about Jamie. Oh, that's coming up on September 17th. I'm going in order. Oh, you still haven't gone? Oh, my God. Yep. Uh, Come From Away, September 10th, is going to be out on Apple Plus, which that's a great, 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 great musical about Newfoundland. If you're not familiar during 9 11, uh, 38 planes landed in Newfoundland. Stop! Don't laugh at me. It's Canadian. It's one of the Canadian things I know. I just love how you're trying to pronounce it so correctly and it's sounding so American at the same time. Whatever, whatever. New- I don't New- care. You, they landed in care. Newfoundland. Newfoundland. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. Leave me alone. Anyways, um, it's a great show. They have the original cast for it uh, and they filmed the stage production, sort of what they did with Hamilton. Um, This is one I'm very much looking forward. And then Amazon is also doing 
on uh, September 17th, everybody's talking about Jamie, which is what you were saying. You were shocked I didn't mention. I for am those who don't know, for that. For those who don't know, it's uh, based on, it's, it's an English movie uh, that uh, a kid is trying to find himself and he finds out that he likes to perform drag and it's the story that is uh, his journey into becoming that and his acceptance of himself and is also his father. I want to make sure that people know that I think it's Rupert Grant who's in that as well. Yes. Richard E. Grant, sorry. Richard E. Grant, who was in Loki, who he was the original Loki. He is in this. He is. He looks fantastic in it. I would highly recommend anyone who does who hasn't got that on their radar, please mark uh, September 17th because it looks like a fantastic movie. Yeah, it is a it is a based on a musical that was yeah. on the West End. So it is going to be a movie musical, which I'm very excited for. Also, and this is one where you may roll your eyes at me. I I'm so excited for The Eyes of Tammy Faye on September 17th. Jessica Chastain, uh, Andrew Garfield. It looks so good. I think it's gonna, It's clearly Oscar bait, but it's one that I'm, it's, it's hook, line, and sinker snapping me up. I love me some Tammy Faye. So very excited for that. And then I guess lastly, I don't know if I'm excited for it. I don't know if I am more going to hate watch it, but September 24th, Dear Evan Hansen, the Pasek and Paul musical is coming out and I will the, be watching that. The Ben Platt, I'm 30 years old and I look 40 years old in the movie, movie. This, I'm not a fan of the musical. I'm not a fan of the story. I will be watching the movie because it's going to be considered, it's Oscar bait. It's going to be presented. It's probably going to get nominations and I... It will probably Don't. win for best original song. They'll probably add a new song. Do they song have? In. Oh, they probably will. Because they no, because they that. added a new one for respect. Yep. So that so. might be a re that might be her the way they give it to J HUD without giving it to J HUD. Yeah. So I can imagine that they because they every time uh, uh, the brothers of Dear Evan Hansen who who wrote the music who uh, wrote the I think they wrote the script as well uh, the screenplay mm -hmm. uh, they did the Greatest Showman with. Uh, uh, they did uh, Lala Wood with Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. They are well known. Wait, what did you just say? Lala Wood, isn't it? Welcome to La La, La, La Land. Land. Oh, fucking, I've never I'm seen like, it. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Lala Wood, La La Land, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I can imagine that they will be nominated. They have, I think they've only won one Oscar for La La Wood Land. La La Land. <laughs> La La Land. Hey, dude. Cancer brain, okay? Cancer brain. Okay, I went there. I went there. Cancer brain is screwing me up these days. Um, so I can imagine that's going to be one of the top picks. So those are the ones that actually was I was looking forward to. September is usually a very slow month because people are getting back to school. People are doing movies, but they do have some movies that people will be able to stream online, but also go to the movies if they wish. But with Delta rearing its head these days, who knows if that's actually going to happen. I do want to mention October a little bit because there are some great movies that are coming in October and we're going to talk about them a little bit more in, uh, uh, in September, but I want to just put them on people's radar. Sure. Venom 2 is coming out in October. Ooh, I love me some of him. Dune is coming out in October, which is... That's with uh, Timothy, right? Yeah. Shyamalan? It, yeah, it's, uh, it's been well received, the trailer, so people are looking forward to that. Jackass 4 is coming out in uh, October and Ass. the one the one I'm really excited about and I might actually get out to the movie theaters in October is Halloween Kills with Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back for I think one of the final times that Jamie Lee Curtis is going to do the Halloween series so I'm looking forward to it it is the sequel to the Halloween movies from 1976 the sequel of the Halloween 2, 3, 4, 5 Halloween H2O I don't know, Halloween, Rob Zombie, Halloween, uh, the one that just came out two years ago, and then Halloween Kills is the newest installment. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, so those are the movies that I'm looking forward to. The next two months are actually kind of packed for movies that I'm going to be paying attention to. TV shows, on the other hand, they're, uh, everything's returning. The one I want to talk about with Michael here is one that we were pissed off about when it got canceled from NBC. Um, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, and we're just going to talk about this briefly before we move into Benefer. Um, 
is um, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. For those who don't know, uh, it was a well-received season one. It won, uh, it was nominated for a few Emmys, won uh, nominated for a few Golden Globes. I think it actually won the Golden Globe, if I'm not mistaken, and then picked up for season two. And then season two was semi well received it didn't do as good as the first season but it was well received and it left the season finale left on a massive massive cliffhanger i think michael and i both texted each other after we watched it and we said what the fuck's going on how can they end it like this they have to pick it up for a third season nbc said Meh, we're not gonna do it so the uh, uh, the writer of the show started trying to shop the show as, around as much as possible, and they found one streaming service that was willing to pick it up for a hol- holiday Christmas release movie. So basically, Hallmark Channel movie, but Zoe's extraordinary playlist. This is a streaming service that I'd never heard of until recently, Roku. Uh, I did not know they had a streaming service. That shows you how much I was in the loop. But were you shocked at this? I mean, that I got picked up by Roku a little bit. Um, I think Roku is now trying to do like what Netflix is doing and Hulu is doing. They're trying to get into the game. So they're, they probably shopped it around to everyone. And Roku is like, oh, this is one we could maybe actually afford because everyone else has said no. Um, so they're trying to, they may actually keep it going because they have nothing like that. It's mostly... As far as I'm aware, it's mostly a lot of like designing women and murder diaries and uh, like a lot of stuff like that, like of weird, like kind of older stuff that's been off TV for a while that other streaming services haven't snatched up. Um, The one that, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I think it'll, I think it'll probably be around for a bit, just if, especially if the movie does well. I think Roku is going to go the way of Yahoo streaming service. Do we, do we all remember when Yahoo had a streaming service? Because I do. They had one TV show that they thought was everyone was going to gravitate and buy memberships in their uh, streaming service, which was the NBC show Community with, uh, uh, I forget their names right now, but Chevy Chase, Donald Glover, and uh, Nicole Yvette Brown was on it. So Allison Brie, uh, so they picked it up and then literally it cost them an arm and a leg to produce the show. And then after the show ended, they had to close up shop because no one was streaming it because people were downloading the show from TV. So I hope Roku has uh, understands that this could happen to them and people aren't going to pick up a, sh- a pick up pick up a streaming service just for one movie so hopefully they're in the game and they start producing some original content here well the big thing with roku is that it's like an amazon fire stick that is what a roku kind of is okay so they have that going for them that you can stream all these other things so they're getting money from people buying the roku device so it, i think it i think it's just their like steps which is why they're doing it as a movie and not as a full season to see is this something people are going to watch? Is this something that's worth doing? Is it going to get critical acclaim? Who knows? Yeah. Um, so with that, that is, unless there's something else you want to talk about coming upcoming, but I think we'll there's ta- oh. one television show that's coming back season three of the circle on Netflix. Uh, listen, I thought it was gonna be trash and I have enjoyed every single season of this show. Sorry, sorry. Cancel me all you want. I enjoy it. God damn it. <laughs> Hi, how are you? So the circle's coming back, eh? I'm yeah. so looking forward to that. You really should watch it. It's a fun time. I said no one ever. No, a lot of people watch. I mean, there's clearly three seasons and three UK seasons, and they made a French version. The UK's done. They're not making any more. France, I think, is done, and they're not making any more. This but the US ones picked up steam. People really like it. I think it's a fun, sh- it's a fun show. Okay, I will, I will look into it. I'm not giving you credit, but I will look into it. Fabulous. Oh. 
Um, okay, so are you done now? Is there anything else I'm going to be disgusted at when you talk about your TV shows that are returning? I'm done! Okay, which most shows don't usually start returning until the end of September, beginning of October. So yeah. we will be talking about that more in depth in uh, September's uh, Entertainment Rundown, which you are listening to right now with our entertainment pundit, Michael Nichols Uh I, I do want to go into one topic before we talk about Emmy predictions because it is a topic that I have no interest of talking about, but I wanted I want to get onto it because people seem to be swooning over the fact that after months and months and years and years, Benifer is back. Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez. I was going to say Jennifer Aniston, but that would have been awkward. <laughs> J-Lo. J-Lo and Ben Affleck are now an official, unofficial couple. They are getting photos taken of themselves on cruise ships they seem to be lovey lovey hubby dubby so what was your initial thoughts of the benefer reunite or benefer 2.0 this is a publicity stunt i'm convinced i am convinced it's a publicity stunt i do not think that this is real i because these the publicity shots they keep getting are like shot for shot what they were from like years ago like in particular, the one of them on the boat with her in the bikini and him putting his hand on her behind is literally shot for shot. I am, I think that A-Rod stepped out with that Southern Decadence woman or Southern Charmed or whatever that Bravo television program is. And Jennifer did not want that to get out because she wanted to end it on her own terms. And then it fell apart. So she instantly jumped to who can we can who can we like get the hit off of my breakup with a rod because he cheated on me and get everyone excited about me oh we'll get ben back ben, so ben's not doing anything ben's basically sitting at home doing absolutely nothing so let's get him back i mean he really isn't doing anything he he, he was batman <laughs> was being the operative word no he's coming back for the flash movie oh because they have to make it robert pattinson no, they're bringing it back. No, because so the Batman... Oh, okay, we're getting to the movie here, but I'm going to say this. So the Batman with Robert Pattinson is in its own universe. I hate this. Just make a damn fucking... This is the issue. Okay, this is the issue with DC. It needs to have a concrete story. Every single movie can't be its own universe. No, because they because Zack Snyder is bringing back a potential Batman versus Deathstroke movie, so that's gonna be yeah, done with Will Smith as Deathstroke. Oh no, Will Smith with Deadshot. Um, Joe Magnola. Mag- oh, he's pretty. Yeah, so he's gonna be he he was in the end of uh, the original uh, uh, Justice League movie. Or Batman versus Superman movie. So they're bringing back that. They're bringing back Jared Leto. They're trying to get the Snyderverse back up and running. But uh, so the Batman with Robert Patterson is its own extended universe. They do not, they are not tied together. Grant Gustin from CBW, CW's uh, The Flash is in the Flash movie because they're going to do a crossover because um, what's his name? Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller was in the TV show because they did a crossover on that show as well. So there's my two cents. But as we can tell, we totally like to talk about Benefer so much. We went to talk about DC Comics. Yeah, I think it's definitely, you had to talk about it. It's been all over the place, but I think it's all a lie. So it, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, last big topic that we're going to talk about before the final one, which I'm so happy to talk about, is Emmy predictions, Emmy predictions, Emmy predictions. Uh, later on in September, September uh, 19th, if I'm not mistaken, the Emmys are coming down. They are going to be awarded. I'm not sure if they're going to be doing it socially distanced or how they're going to be doing their show this year. But the Emmy nominations came out during the summer. I just want to make sure I pull up the correct uh, list here. I just pulled Uh, them up myself. (laughs) There you go. So um, was there any shocks or surprises for you in the uh, uh, categories of outstanding comedy series and outstanding drama series? Outstanding drama, I was floored the boys got nominated. I would have thought that would have been a comedy if it got nominated at all. Um, An outstanding comedy... I'm actually kind of shocked at a lot of these. Um, 
specifically Cobra Kai and Emily Pear, Emily and Paris, because I didn't think that they were anything to write home about. Um, I will say The Flight Attendant as a comedy series is kind of interesting because I would have put that in the drama series. Um, I also have learned that I don't watch a lot of comedies and I watch way too many dramas. Because I don't know, I the only real ones from comedy series that I like finish was The Flight Attendant. So with this list, I was actually, I wasn't shocked at the comedy section. I wasn't, I, there was one in the uh, uh, outstanding drama series that I was shocked at because I'm, st I'm still trying to figure out why it's so relevant still to this day, which is This Is Us, the NBC show. Oh, that's got to go. Exactly. Like usually after about four seasons, they stop getting nominated, but this one seems to be getting nominated all the time. And I still don't understand why, but I stopped watching it and I just don't really care for it anymore. In the outstanding comedy section, I, I you can see the clear front runner is Ted Lasso, yeah. which is getting a lot of play right now, especially with season two just being released in time for the Emmys. Shocker, shocker. So I can imagine that this is going to win that. Uh, when it comes to outstanding uh, drama series, there are two that I am putting my bets on and I'm still not 100% sure who's going to win, which is Pose. It's not going to win. You don't think so? No, but it was their last season, and it, everyone was okay. They're not. They're not going to give it to it. They should, and, but they're not. And Bridgerton, I've heard a lot I, of good things about this, and this is why I think it's going to win. I love Bridgerton. They're not going to give it to Bridgerton. Who do you think they're going to give it to? I think because I've watched every single one of these except for This Is Us because I can't do it anymore. I watched one episode and was like, this is just people crying for two hours. Yeah. Um, and then. I've not seen The Crown, which I know, shame on me, because I've I heard everyone loves it. I think it should be Lovecraft Country. I'm going to be real yeah. with y'all. Okay. I, I, or I, Handmaid's Tale was game-changing this season. It, but this is last not, season, right? This is last season. No, this is season four. They this can't is for be season four of Handmaid's Tale. Season four was just coming out at this time. No, yeah, it was already released enough for it to be considered the, no it's it's from june to june that's the category range yeah that makes tell is done okay never mind okay i guess not yeah it's season four I thought, okay now i apologize for those who are listening i apologize for that and if you want to send me an email please go to www.crossboardinterviews.ca and you can fill out the contact form and i'll follow it away in the appropriate position the dumpster no <laughs> He said that I did not. If you want to send any messages to Michael about what he just said, please go to the links below and follow him on Facebook or Twitter and Instagram. Actually, he does not have Twitter, so follow him on Instagram and send him his messages that way, and he will get back to you in a timely fashion. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I do think, want. I, oh, go ahead. I, I do think Handmaid's Tale really. I loved Pose this season. I think it was a great season. I just think Handmaid's Tale was a more succinct story. Um, I love I, Lovecraft Country, though. It should have. I, I think it should. It's going to be a weird, that's the one category I just don't know. I like how we both did not say anything about the boys. <laughs> that's yeah. Um, I want to talk about one last category before we move to the actors and actresses, sure. but the outstanding limited or anthology series, I May Destroy You, Mayor of Easttown, uh, The Queen's Gambit, The Underground Railroad, and WandaVision, the prime uh, Disney plus uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, who, who's your favorite? Who, who's your money on for this one? So, I don't know. They were all so good. I've not seen the Underground Railroad, and yeah, I've not they're... seen Mayor of Easttown. But I've heard Mayor of Easttown is just getting critical acclaim. Yeah. Queen's Gambit was amazing. WandaVision was so good. I May Destroy You was so good. I, I mean. I just heard. I think it's going to be an things. unknown. I think there's going to be a split in this one that it's it could go any way. Yeah, I think Queen's Gambit is the safest bet because it's already done so much winning. But that was Wandavision wasn't included, and Wandavision got a lot of awards, which was kind of shocking to me. I was a great series. I really enjoyed it, and I'm so happy to see a lot of the awards that were given to it. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's on my ballot yet for this one. 
Okay, we'll jump into the actors and actresses for the lead series because we won't, won't go into supporting, but we'll just go into lead right now sure. for uh, comedy series and comedy series uh, for lead actress and lead actress, actor and lead actress. Uh, for actors, Anthony Anderson for Blackish, Michael Douglas for the Chloe Komensky method, William H. Macy for Shameless, uh, Jason Sudeikis for Ted Lasso, and Keenan Thompson for Keenan. Uh, who's your money on here? Jason Sudeikis. Yep, same here. Uh, for outstanding lead actress in a comedy series, A.D. Brandt, uh, Bryant uh, for Shrill, Kaylee Coco for The Flight Attendant, Allison Janney for Mom, Tracy Ellis Ross for Blackish, and Gene Smart for Hacks. Who's your pick here? I, I I'm throwing, really, I'm just, go ahead. I really want Kaylee Coco to win. I don't know if she will. I also think they've nominated Tracy Ellis Ross every single year and never given it to her. It might be time to give it to her. Um, with, with blackish ending next season. I, if they don't, if they don't give it to her this season, they'll give it to her next season for sure. Gotcha. And then I, I Allison Janney is always a, a favorite, but I think the comedy series is, I think really an unknown because Schitt's Creek kind of washed the board clean and it's nothing. And in between then a bunch of things have stopped filming. So it's a bunch of new stuff besides Tracy and Allison Jan. So Jane Smart is being uh, hailed for hacks. She has I, been. I don't know anything about it. She has been getting a lot of good PR around this uh, show. I would highly recommend anyone who hasn't watched it go out and watch it. But the one I'm watching and the one I've fallen in love with is A.D. Bryant for Shrill. If you have not seen this show, go stream it today because it is one of the she is a former snl star she wrote the show it's about her being a bigger woman and the troubles that she gets into as a journalist i loved it i liked it i would put my money on alice and jenny to win it but if she doesn't win it i would put because at mom just ended last season it it wrapped up a lot of people love alice and jenny i would put my money on alice and jenny but if i didn't i would put it on uh uh ad bryant to win it as well there's my there's my two cents on that one. Okay, uh, two more categories, then we're gonna finish, and then we'll talk about the Met Gala. Met Gala, Met Gala, Met Gala. Lead actor in a drama series and lead actress in a drama series. Sterling K. Brown for This Is Us. Uh, Jonathan Majors in Lovecraft Country. Jo- Josh O'Connor for The Crown. Regé Jane Page for Bridgerton. Billy Porter for Pose. And Matthew Reese for Perry Mason. Who's your favorite on here? Uh, most of them. Um, <laughs> I really liked Reggie in Bridgerton. I really liked Billy Porter in Pose and Jonathan Majors in Lovecraft Country. I think Billy Porter may have this one. I think his performance in Pose was just so breathtaking. I'm, I'm, I think Jonathan Majors also could sweep it out of nowhere. I think Bridgerton, I don't think it's going to win much of anything. I think nominating them for sure, but I think it's going to come down to, at least for me, Billy Porter or Jonathan Majors. Um, and it's, I think Sterling K. Brown's already won it. They're not going to give it to him again. This is us. Everyone's kind of, this is over it. And uh, the sip crown. Your tea, sip your tea. <laughs> yeah. The crown, I don't know. And Perry I think Mason. You're, I know my husband liked Perry Mason a lot, but I love Matthew Reese. I love him. I love him. Love, love him as an actor. But I think you're right. I think the clear front runner for me is Jonathan Majors. He seems to be doing a really good job with getting his name out there right now with his appearance in Loki, uh, with his new ad- addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But I think he is the clear front runner in my books that he's going to win. Yeah. If not, like you said, Billy Porter is the close behind. So those are the two. Uh, for outstanding lead actress in a drama series, Uzo Abdua for In Treatment, Olivia Coleman for The Crown, Emma Corrin for The Crown, Elizabeth Moss for Handmaid's Tale, MJ Rodriguez for Pose, and Junior Smollett. Journey Love- Smollett. Ah, sure. That, I knew that. <laughs> and for Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraft Country. Who's the favorite? Who's, who should win? Okay. This is one where I'm really torn because The Crown, I'm throwing that out because I've not seen it, so I can't really properly judge it. Uzo Aduba is great. She's already won it, though. And I, I've not seen In Treatment, so I can't quite critique on that. But in terms of the three I've seen, 
I think they're really strong additions, which is Handmaid's Tale, Lovecraft Country, and Pose. I think Elizabeth Moss could easily take it. I think she's a safe bet. I think if they want to make history, which they love to do, I think giving it to MJ Rodriguez for Pose is a really amazing thing. Uh, a, a trans woman of color getting the award, I think would be so awesome to see. Also, Journey Smollett in Lovecraft Country was just so good. I mean, I think it could, I think it could go to any of those three. I also could see, you know, Olivia Coleman is an award show darling. She could easily snatch the crown. Olivia, Col- <laughs> Olivia Coleman could win it because it was her last season of uh, The Crown before she handed it over to the next actress who's going to play Queen Elizabeth. Uh, Emily Corrin, who played Princess Diana, was getting rave reviews, but I do yeah. not think they're going to give it to her. I think you're right. I think they're going to give it to MJ. And they I should. They should, and because it would be history making, and the Emmys love to be that uh, that com- yeah. that that uh, award show. So the last thing I want to talk about now, and this is the one that fashion, fashion and me do not get along. If it's not Old Navy, I do not understand it. Louis Vuitton or Vuitton or whatever you pronounce his last name. When I was in France, we went to the main store and my husband basically got down on his knees and prayed like God that he was there. Uh, I did not, so I was not a big fan, but the Met Gala is coming up in literally two weeks. Um, I I want to read off the topic as the theme, the topic, or whatever you want to call it, that Anna Winter the theme the that anna winters the host the editor of fashion magazine Bogue. chantel Bogue. Bogue. hi i've watched ugly betty i know what these people are <laughs> that's like oh no anna winter is gonna come for me now <laughs> Well, she can because she she ain't come to Canada. Well, she can come to Canada. I just can't come there because the Biden hasn't opened up the border. But anyway, Anna Winters, the fashion editor, magazine contributor of Vogue magazine of fashion, has come out and said the theme for the Met Gala this year is in America, the lexicon of fashion. Yeah, I don't know what that means, Anna. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Anna, if you're listening to this, because I know you are right now. I, I, I got I to say, originality is not your strong suit, is it? Because that seems pretty uh, like 1930s topic. And if Meryl Streep was here from Devil Wears Prada, she'd be reading me for filth right now. But I'm going to say this once again. Where's the originality in your fashion statement there, Anna? Let's, well, let's, it's let's, let's talk about it a little bit. So the reason that they have to do it kind of where it can men, meld between modern and past is because it is also the Met Gala is for those who don't know, the Met Gala it happens at the Met Theater, usually the first Monday in May because of the pandemic. We couldn't have one for the last two years. So now it's been moved to September 13th because it's one of the largest fundraising events um, for the Met Gala, which is this giant museum in New York City. And so what they do is they link a fashion exhibit of like past designers and, and different things. So like when it was uh, critiques on camp, which was I think two or three years ago, it was they pulled different things from like Louis Vuitton and Gucci and, and all these at Halston that were camp, considered campy. So that way it can kind of blend the two together. Um, and then these designers, they pay a lot of money to have their wo- garments walked down. So with this one in particular, Anna Wintour gave like a, she always gives like a little like thoughts on why she picks the topic. And this specific topic is because she's been so inspired by American designers as of late and specifically their use of political and social issues being incorporated into their fashion. And so I, I, I'm curious to see. I don't know if this is the theme we should be going with, but I think it's, this, it's, it's point, a, I know. <laughs> it's a double-edged sword that it's she is opening a up a can of worms here because the moment a Republican-leaning, a right-wing-leaning fashion designer comes up 
and says anti-vaxxers, anti this, that, or the other in their in their fashion designs. And that that becomes the narrative. It's not the narrative of Black Lives Matter, which is the uh, fashion design that seems to be making a big prominent statement right now. But the moment a right-wing fashion designer, because there are out there, sure. gets, gets told, no, you can't do that. Well, the, Anna Wintour, as long as it fits the theme, and it's just, I think she wants that. She wants, because people don't really pay attention to, to the Met Gala. It's one of those things that people who really like fashion are waiting for, because it's, it's our Super Bowl. And so whenever they have, like, when they did notes on camp, the pictures went everywhere and people were like, what are these rich people wearing? I don't understand. And then it kind of opened the door for this conversation on what is camp and opened the door for other people to kind of learn what it was. And so I think she's hoping that this, that I think she hopes that there's a couple of more further alt-right kind of ideas that pop up because that's what will get people talking. That will get people like looking at it and it kind of makes fashion a little more relevant than it has been as of late because like you said your go-to is old navy people aren't looking at louis vuitton gucci all these other places they can't really honestly i can't afford any of that stuff unless you go to china and and get knockoff versions but But i did not say that china i would love to come into your country one day in the future and enjoy your beautiful bountiful whatever chinese historical things that you have that i can look at but um, the average person's not gonna be able to go and buy it. What and honestly, one a lot of the stuff is just not worth. There's but lately, it's just not been much worth writing home about. But when it's this, it kind of gets people excited about the idea of fashion. And I think fashion's always made a political statement. It's always been kind of out there. And I think by doing something like this, that's going to be widely publicized. It's going to be seen by so many people. And I think it's a really interested i think it's an interesting topic i'm curious to see what they have from the previous vaults of fashion designers that they're able to pull up um and i think featuring american designers is a real especially in right now when so many people are looking at what can we buy that are american made or, or designers that are american created i think it's a really great opportunity for a lot of designers to get their names across where the a lot of like the Karl Lagerfelds and Louis Vuittons and Gucci's and all that stuff probably won't be invited this year. Versace. Versace. Are I, <laughs> give me, give me, give me an inch, man. Just give me an inch. Like, do you know, who, do you know Donatella? He's the one that got shot, right? No, that was Johnny. Yeah, there you go. Same thing. Johnny. Oh, that movie's coming out in October. Yeah. We'll talk about like, that. Not they'll talk about that later. I'm so excited. <laughs> Lady Lady Gaga can't act, so let's just leave that at that. For those who anyway. want, for those who want to send negative emails to me, go to crossboardinterviews.ca. Go to the contact page. Send me your emails, and I will file it in the appropriate locations. Um, the Met Gala. We're going to be talking about it a lot in September. We're going to be talking about the hits and misses of the fashion world and who yeah. who wore it best and who who really flubbed it and all that fun stuff. So I, I do will have one last thing I want to ask you though. Sure. Who is the one that you're looking to? Because actors and actresses and the the who's who's of who's who's are always invited to this. Sure. Um, who are who are you going to be looking to? Who are the ones that you're saying, you know what, this person always comes prepared and they know how to present themselves at the, the Met Gala? Well, the big thing with the Met Gala, it's the celebrities get picked by the designers. So I think it's the designers really to watch for. Okay. Um, so I think that Christian Siriano is one of my favorite designers. I'm, he's already kind of been very involved in the political like fashion designing. I think he's one to watch for, but I think in terms of like the big names that are going to be there that are usually get the better outfits. Cause some of them, like they, they do miss Sarah because Jessica Parker is so dirty every year. Rihanna though, Rihanna always shows up looking perfect. And they all, Beyonce shows up usually really looking good. And I hate to say it, Kimberly Kardashian, especially without Kanye this year, I think she can go a little further than than she's been able to because she doesn't have Kanye. 
with her. What you hate, Kim, don't you? Is she still going by Kim Kardashian West? I don't know. Because you see all the PR that she's doing and it's all Kimberly Kardashian West. Well, her brand is KK or KKW. So that might be why she's still going by it. Well, she can't go KKK. That'd be awkward. Well, yeah, well. I went there. I went there. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I mean, I think that there's really going to be some good celebrities to look out for. And I think that some of the hosts, Timothy Chalamet's one, he usually, he's, he usually does not care if he goes a little zany. So we might see something really spectacular on Harry Styles. Posts. Harry Styles will go. Cuckoo. Harry Styles might go a little cuckoo too. Billy um, Porter. Billy Porter's always one to watch. They and he works a lot with Siriano. So you're going to probably see him. You're probably going to see Taraji. You'll probably see. You might see Octavia because um, Christian works a lot with Octavia Spencer. Um, you might see. I'm trying to think of who Christian works with. I'm very familiar with Christian Seriano. RuPaul? Like, Will RuPaul be there? Um, or is he on the outs with the, the inner circle because of the whole fracking thing? No, RuPaul probably won't get invited because la- when they did invite RuPaul, they've only invited him, I think, one time. And it was for camp because he's a drag queen. And then he showed up in a suit. And it was disappointing. Everyone's like, why didn't you just show up in drag? We invited four other drag queens from your show that are big names that showed up in full drag and you did not. And so it was one of those like, I don't he's think a, he's gonna be welcome because back. Because unless you're paying him money, he's not gonna show up in drag. Well, they pay for him to have this very expensive dinner. True. It's like, True. It's like 100,000 a plate. <laughs> Let's go next year. If we make enough money, the cross border interview entertainment rundown will will broadcast live from the Met Gala. Um, you have to be invited. So Anna, if you even press invite me, what? Even press? Oh, press maybe. Yeah, I'll be with. I'll go be press. I'll exactly. Be we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get credentialed and we'll go in and we'll like do our thing. <laughs> Perfect. Um, with that. With that, we are going to be talking about the Met Gala again in September with the hits and misses, as I said. Uh, uh, we are literally aiming at the two hour and 15 minute mark. This is the longest episode that Michael and I have recorded. And I'm looking for it for everyone to send in their hate mail for everything that we have said. And they can do that at crossborderinterviews.ca in the contact form and we will file it. If you want to reach out to Michael, his Instagram account is linked in the bio below. So please, please, please reach out to him as well. And Michael, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've missed these conversations. I, I enjoy these conversations. I'm looking forward to getting back and doing these on a regular basis, on a monthly basis with you to talk about the biggest entertainment news stories of the month, of the year, of the week, of the upcoming month. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Happy to. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. Media, movies, mm. TV, fashion. So very happy to be here and excited to impart all of my horrible bad opinions about TV and film with you all. Hey, it's what we do best around here. Our opinions are the best opinions because my opinion matters the most to me. Uh, with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and for uh, streaming the show. Uh, like I said during the show jokingly, but if you have any comments, if you have anything you want us to cover in next uh, next month's episode, please, 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 please go to the crossboardinterviews.ca, go to the contact form, send us a message, send us of what some of the entertainment news that you want us to talk about because we are getting good traction right now of what people want us to talk about politically. So let's talk. What do you want to hear from entertainment wise? And we will discuss it live on air. And maybe, maybe, maybe during the Oscar show, which is going to be uh, Sunday, September 19th, I believe. Emmys. Emmys. We are going to be live streaming that episode. We will be live on YouTube that night to talk about the biggest political, the biggest entertainment stories from the Oscars. So uh, from the Emmys, Emmys. Emmys. So please, 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 please follow along. Go to our YouTube channel, which is linked below. Uh, subscribe to the show because we are getting great traction and we would love to have you along for the ride. Give us some comments. Anyway, from me, Michael, thank you so much for doing this. Happy to. 
Anyway, guys, have yourself an excellent day. Have an excellent, an excellent weekend. Enjoy yourself. And remember, keep on talking. For everyone here at the Crossboard Entry Podcast, have yourself an excellent weekend, guys. Bye.